Jerry, what do you think is the best? I mean, we talked about this a little bit with The Shining. What do you think is the best Stephen King film adaptation? I think, you know, one of my, my favorites, and when we talked about this actually, was The Dead Zone is a personal favorite. Um Mm. That's one that that's, that gets lost a lot. But I, I, I mean, if I had to really, I, I might, I might go out on a limb and say like Carrie or the Shawshank Redemption. Mm-hmm. I mean, but there are actually, you know, remember there's a period where there weren't a lot of good ones. But then if you right. really think about it, there are. I mean, Carrie, The Shining, um, The Mist, uh, The Shawshank Redemption, The Dead Zone, uh, Misery. Stand by me. I mean, really yeah. I mean, when you, when you look like, at a tr- when you look at a track record, I mean, you know, there are lots of duds and not so good movies, but you know, there there are fifty, sixty movies, whatever, however many yeah, there are from I Stephen mean, King. You know, it's a good enough batting average. Well, Total Film came out with a list. This is our list for the evening. Okay. Worst to best Stephen King movies. All right, let's do it. Okay. The Re- the Mangler two at number fifty. I guess no argument there. I had no idea that there was a sequel. <laughs> Children of the Corn Revelation number forty nine two thousand one. Oh my god. Graveyard Shift. Oh, that's the one with the giant rat. <laughs> yes. Okay. Forty seven Pet Cemetery two. Don't mm. remember a thing about Pet Cemetery two. I remember the first one. Children of the Corn 666, Isaac's Return, <laughs> number 46. Children of the Corn sequels are going to be oh. on here. You know that you know you had to have to have some bad movies in your corner where there are actually four movies that are worse than something called Children of the Corn 666, Isaac's Return. I know, that's really, you know, that says something right there. Number 45, The Rage, Carrie 2. I could definitely, yeah, I would put that on there, I guess. I mean, it's a bad movie. I didn't, I thought we were talking about direct, like, adaptations, not things that it, his name is on. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is this is going to be very interesting. These are already down here. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is the bottom of the barrel. But they're rebooting Carrie now, and it, it the Broadway musical just came back, too, which is the original mounting of that musical is known as one of the great duds in Broadway history. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they've improved it a bit. Children of the Corn Three, <laughs> Urban Har- Urban Harvest at number forty four. It must have been big direct to DVD sellers for them to make that many of them. Yeah, <clears throat> the original Mangler, at number forty three. This is fascinating. These are down so low. Okay, <laughs> I mean... you know, <laughs> you know what the plot description of the Mangler is? <laughs> Detective John Hunton, played by Ted Levine. Go Ted. Investigates when it seems a laundry folding machine has acquired a taste for I human know. flesh. Oh my god, I I remember this was advertised all over TV when it came out. When you when you find yourself writing that, do you yeah. think you've kind of you're kind of written out? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> really, what's I'm, next? The dishwasher I'm, of death. I mean, I'm fr- I'm fresh out, guys. I, uh, <laughs> number forty two, Children of the Corn Five, <laughs> <laughs> Fields of Terror. Uh, Eva Mendez was in that. Way to go, Eva. <laughs> Number 41 from 2002, Firestarter 2, Rekindled. I, I wasn't even aware there was a I had sequel. no idea. Who plays um, the Drew Barrymore part? I mean... Marguerite Moreau. Uh, I hope she okay. got a big payday for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Number 40. Children of the Corn 2, the, the, the final sacrifice. <laughs> and it was nothing final about it, judging from the other... <laughs> no, it wasn't. Number 39, okay, here's here's the first like legitimate movie on the list. Number 39, Dreamcatcher. Oh, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, oh, God, man, that's... Uh... Yeah. Ooh, that was that was dis- that was disappointingly and bad in such a way you're just like what the fuck's going on it's here? It's too bad because I mean Larry Kasdan. You know, I know you would think you would think you know I mean it had a great cast and everything and it just was ridiculous. I mean ahead of that number thirty eight Sleepwalkers. Eh. Machen, what's her name? Machen Amick. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, hmm. She was she was one of those great early '90s babes. Yes, right? she was. Yes, she was. This was probably I guess this was her big 
big claim to fame at the time. Number 37. She was also in Twin Peaks. That's she? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 37, Children of the Corn, 4, The Gathering. I, like, I just, I always just put them all like that. <laughs> These movies suck. I, don't know. <laughs> I think part four is getting short shrift here. Yeah, right? I think I, so uh... too. Number 36, there are 14 Stephen King movies that they consider worse than Maximum Overdrive at number 36. That's saying something. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Stephen King's one and only time behind the director's chair. Number 35, Riding the Bullet. And that's by Mick Garris, um, who is like considered like the nose very good at adapting. See, I've never seen Riding the Bullet, so I don't know, but I mean. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it the name, the title of the <clears throat> memoir by Steve McQueen's ex-wife? Uh, number thirty-four, <laughs> the Lawnmower Man. That's not, you know, that movie's like really weird because that's like at the, like the whole beginning of the virtual reality right. phrase, really. Pierce Brosnan, uh, uh, Jeff Fahey. You know what's funny about that? It has zero resemblance. To the story. Oh yeah, he, he came out and said that immediately. I mean, it's one of my favorite stories. For, I forget what book it's in, but it's one of my favorite <laughs> Stephen King short stories. But there's nothing, nothing uh, in in the movie that's in the book. I mean, it's just completely right. Tommy I, knockers. I remember that controversy. Well, not controversy, but I remember that was a big deal when it came out. Tommy knockers number thirty three. That was that was made for TV, right? That was a TV miniseries. Uh, yes, it was. With Tracy Lords, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, Tommy Knocker is also the title of the memoir for uh, Tommy Matola's ex wife. <laughs> Number 32 is Thinner. They put that, I would put that down further, but I mean, that was pretty really? bad. Really? You, you put it below Children of the Corn 6 Well, six, I don't six. know. No, it's a little <laughs> better than Children of the Corn, but it's not, I mean, it's just like really run of the mill. Nothing really spectacular. Yeah, yeah. The concept, that, I think, is more interesting than the actual movie. That was the period where they made so many of them, and most mm-hmm. of them were disposable. Number 31, our reigning champion, the original Children of the Corn. Wow. Remember who the female lead in that was? I don't. I, I know as soon as you say it, I'll be like, oh, yeah. but Linda Hamilton. She's the come same a long year. way. Well, the same year that The Terminator came out. Wow. Yeah. So things worked out. Um, number 30, Creep Show 2. Oh, God. That I just, that, that, I would think that would be down lower, but now I'm really curious to see what's coming up. Number 29, The Night Flyer. Okay. Nondescript, really. Dolan's Cadillac or Dolan's Cadillac. I know that that's a short story. I think from Nightmares and Dreams. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Wes Bentley and Christian Slater. I didn't even know that was a film. Okay. I didn't even know that either. Um, wow. Number twenty-seven, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Mm-hmm. Number twenty-six. So, number twenty-six. Now, this is a movie that a lot of people love. We talked to D. Wallace about it. Cujo. Cujo, I think it would be higher up. I mean. Yeah, it's, I think it should be. I think Cujay's... But Cujay's we're, we're at the halfway mark, though, aren't we now? We're, like, getting towards, so... Yeah, but uh, somehow there's 26 better, 25 better movies than Cujo and Stephen King's resume. Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a good, effective, really effective movie, and a difficult movie to make effective. You know? It's all right. it takes place in a car with a dog, you know? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um... Okay, the dark half number twenty five. I remember seeing that in a the theater. That wasn't that. That was all right. You know, that was interesting. Yeah, George Romero. Mm-hmm. Number twenty four is Firestarter. Hmm. Wow. Okay. I'm. I'm not. You just now. I'm just really curious what's coming up. You know. I mean. Twenty twenty three is Needful Things. That that was decent. I mean, I, that was a decent movie. I mean, I don't. You know, Max Lucido was great as the you know the devil. I mean, can't ask for a better. Yeah, and Ed Harris, good cast. Ed Harris, I mean, that was a good. That's actually that's a that's a really underappreciated adaptation. I think it is too. 
Silver Bullet, number 22. Hmm. Man, that yeah. wolf looked like the Coors Beer Wolf when we saw it. That's all I got to say. It looked like the Coors Silver Bullet Wolf, but that's just me. Yeah. Something's wrong, though, when you uh, when when you uh, put Gary Busey in a Stephen King film and he's not scary. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Today he would be. Uh, make a documentary. Make a documentary about Gary Busey. It'll be scarier than Silver Bullet. <laughs> Uh, Cat's Eye number twenty one. Hmm. Never crazy about that. There's something. There's a there's a story in there about James Woods though trying to quit smoking or something. In which one? Cat's in, Eye. In Cat's Eye. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I remember that. Number twenty is Secret Window with Johnny Depp. That that was a pretty good movie. That was pretty good. Nineteen is Pet Cemetery. We used to watch that all the time. When that first came on VHS in college, we we watched that like that weekend when it came out. And you sure can it's now. It's the only book that ever scared me. Like reading the book scared me, and, and uh, I wasn't used to you know right. being scared by by a book. Number eighteen is Christine. Mm. They just had a midnight showing of Christine at my local drive-in. I wish I would have known about it ahead of time, but. Uh, that would have been interesting. That hey, would I, have like, been, yeah. I like Christine. I think it's an effective movie. Mm-hmm. Number 17, Toby Hooper's Salem's Lot. M- the miniseries. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, I remember that yeah. was a big deal when that came on. I mean, people couldn't stop talking about it. I thought it was, and I thought it was good. I mean, the, uh, you know, in the 70s, I think it probably pushed the boundaries of television, what you were allowed to do on television. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. Um I remember David Soul and his and the, the elbow patches on his jacket. I mean right. <laughs> such a seventies kind of thing. Um <laughs> it's funny the things that you remember. <laughs> yeah, no, I Because uh, uh, I've watched Salem's Lot like de- decades ago with a girlfriend of mine at the time. And I'm like, seriously, could David Soul's jeans be any tighter? I mean, seriously, he was wearing the, t- <laughs> the tightest freaking jeans I've ever seen. Oh, my seen. God, man. You really do, right? <laughs> and my girlfriend was like, she was like, I know. What's, what, it's like he's making cream of wheat or something. <laughs> I was like, which, it, make, it makes no sense, but so somehow it's funny. Somehow it does make sense, that phrase. Okay, that's number 17. Number 16 is The Running Man. Okay, yeah. I think it's the finest movie Richard Dawson's ever been a part of. Well, yeah, I mean, we're going, we're using that as the yardstick. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a good Harold Faltermeyer score. Mm-hmm. Number fifteen is Creep Show from nineteen eighty-two, the original Creep Show. Yeah, that did that. You got to put that. That first one is. Um, yeah, that was good. a big deal in junior high. So. Number fourteen is Apt Pupil. Now here's where I, I like this movie. I know a lot of people don't, but I always like the the novella, and I, I thought it was well done. I mean, I thought it was a good. You know, it's a movie that no one ever talks about, but no. and it's and it's you know because it's the follow up to Usual Suspects yes. of Brian Singer. But it is actually it's not a bad movie. It's actually very interesting, um, and you know one of the actors is dead from it. So um, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't. I never thought this was a bad movie, as people said. I, 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 I think you. Appointment for people expecting another Usual Suspects, maybe, but. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. Number. Now this is interesting. Number thirteen, Hearts in Atlantis. Well, that is. See, we're now we're getting to the stuff I've read. Um. Emotionally and I liked comp- the book, and I didn't mind the movie. The movie, remember, came right after September 11th. Yeah, yeah. Directed by Scott Hicks, I think it was like his follow-up to Shine. I remember being totally underwhelmed by it. I never watched it after that opening night at the theater. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's open for rediscovery, this movie. Emotionally complex and moving, this is one of the more low-key King adaptations. Very low-key. But but is all the better for it. Mm -hmm. And plus, you know, Hopkins and Stephen King... So the expectations might have been, you know, maybe he's going to do something mm-hmm. scary, and you know, he didn't. But, um, 1408 at number 12. That's a, that's, that's a good movie. That's a good... Yeah. 
That's a solid movie. Number 11, It. <sighs> I'd like to be, see that made into a feature. Hmm. Kate, let me ask you this. For a book that thick, that, is there a way to condense that? I mean, no, to do it no, justice? Make, my idea for it, which, you know, uh, you know, I'm not in the running for the job, but my idea for it has always been, like, divided into two separate films, the childhood and the adulthood. Mm-hmm. Uh, it needs to be two different films. Just right. as Stephen King argues that The Stand needs to be two different films. By the way, uh, I mean, Ben Affleck's doing The Stand, which I think is great news, but... Um, they picked up the Dark Tower again. Warner Brothers is considering it again. So now this is going to be how are they now? It's not dead yet. That project. Yeah. You know. Well, I think the best way to approach that is, quite honestly, do what they're doing with Game of Thrones on HBO. Make each book a series, like a like a like ten like like eight or ten part series. Yeah. That's the well, only way I think you can really do it. Their idea has been to. Um, do it as a feature and then carry it over into television. That's I, a good idea, yeah. but risky. I think, you know, imagine, I mean, Warner Brothers owns HBO. Or, mm-hmm. I mean, do it as a, uh, do it as an HBO miniseries, exactly. I mean, yeah, that would I, be, I just, God, what a ratings bonanza that would be, you know? Dude, and all HBO, and HBO could do something with every, like, with Comcast and Fios, make, like, a special when that comes on. Like a special like deal because you know a lot of people believe it or not don't you know we we like to think everyone has HBO but they really a lot of people don't have HBO and this would be a good way like a promotional thing for each time the first like the premiere episode offer like customers who don't have or just ba- who have basic cable offer them a sweet deal mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you could really do a lot with this um, yeah I agree we're gonna bring on Dean for the final ten here I just okay. thought his call is in hey Dean we're gonna play his theme music. Oh, okay, hang on. Dean, hang on, I'm putting you on hold again. All right. All right. All right. Uh, all right, just pretend like that moment didn't happen. Okay. All right, we're about to bring on Dean to uh, review our uh, final ten of our best Stephen King adaptations. Dino! <laughs> You're back All right. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I love yeah, it. Hello. Great. <laughs> All right, number 10. Uh, All right, Dean. How are you, man? What an absurd list so far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, number 10 is uh, The Stand. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you can top Gary Sinise as the lead. In that. I mean, Gary Sinise just seemed to be <coughs> as the lead. And that, in that first movie. night, that first night was just awesome. Yeah, just incredible. Yeah, it begins better than it ends. I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can you can top the movie itself, but Gary Sinise just seemed like perfect casting mm-hmm. for that. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, number nine. The Dead Zone is number nine. Okay, that that's definitely a wow. Very that's low. Underappreciated, I think. but it's good that it's on there. It's a, that, I mean, I'm surprised it's that high. That, but I'm happy it is. Yeah, I agree. It does need to be higher, but yeah, it's a, it's one of the greats. Number eight is The Mist. That, they, they, I like that movie a lot, but a lot of people hate that movie because they changed the ending and they didn't like the ending. They people really, you know, we talk about polarizing movies like Drive and things that nature. Remember when The Mist came out? Well, it was a dud. I mean, not, not the exact movie you want to release on Thanksgiving when the whole family's home, but um, <laughs> but remember how polarizing that movie was? Um, yeah. Like four what four years ago, and it was people really either loved it or you hated it. And Wasn't really the movie? Hated, didn't, the, didn't the movie end like very abysmal? At like like no hope whatsoever. No hope, and then there, he, he turned, you know, and then he you don't he didn't have to do what he did, mm-hmm. and it's just like right. I remember. I thought devastating. That, I, I thought that was so ballsy. Yeah, oh. it was incredibly ballsy. I, and but people really. The people who liked it, like me, really liked it. But then the people who hated it. Oh my God! You would have thought they got hit by a car or something. I mean, yeah. oh my how God! How dare you? How dare you do that to me? Yeah. Happy thanks. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I did number, like that movie quite a bit. Yeah. I did too. I yeah. Did. Number I mean, number really seven good. is a movie I like. Uh, Dolores Claiborne. That is a good. It's an underappreciated one too. 
I haven't the seen edit- that in forever. It might be time to revisit that one. Oh, the editing in that movie is phenomenal. Um, hmm. Carrie at number six. At number six? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I love Carrie. I'm Carrie is so very. Too. Me too. I mean, I would put that at like maybe two or three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Me too. So what do they put ahead of it? They put ahead of it Misery at number five. Okay. I don't think Misery holds a candle to carry. No, no, but yeah, uh, I, I would have put Misery like down like maybe ten or twelve or something. Yeah, I thought you were going to say fifty. I would, mean, I would, have, I would have, the I would have, of it. Yeah, switch Misery with Dead Zone or something. Uh, Stand by Me at number four. Mm-hmm. Number three, no, 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 no. Number three is the Green Mile on their list. What? I like it, but That's I would put it shot. much lower. I like the movie, but I would put it much lower. It's not. I wouldn't. You know. I'm sorry. It's good, but it ain't great. I mean. Yeah. Number two is The Shining. Oh my God. What's so number? That, that the means number we one. Know what number one is. Well, that means that there can only be one movie. We've already been through forty died of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! It's the, the po- Sha- every the, politician's favorite movie. Um, yeah, the Shawshank Redemption. That's true. They came out with a report that said the Shawshank Redemption is one of those movies that appeal to both Republicans and Democrats. Yeah. Only. No, but if you ever read, um, you know, ever any ask a politician, I remember you, there was a fa- like a period where you, and they asked them what their favorite movie was. They always say like the Shawshank Redemption. It's always shows. <laughs> it, it, it's it's the movie uh, it's the movie loving equivalent of kissing a baby for a politician. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a really good movie too. But I mean, I don't know. I would have put some of the others ahead of it, but that's just me. Yeah. Well, I, I I still agree with Jerry that Dead Zone is the best one. Why don't you say, why don't we just don't because it's it's a, it's first it's really cool for a lot of reasons. First of all, it's Cronenberg, you know, doing doing a great adaptation as he always does, I think. But it's also walking and not his typical, you know, walking. Oh, walk, walking's beautiful in it. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. he's just it's a very moving performance. And that's it. I mean, it's uh, I mean, just the just the plot alone. It, mm-hmm. It's such a crackerjack plot. I mm-hmm. mean, it's just so visceral. And the walking and Cronenberg and and uh, the and level, yeah, the depth of emotion in yeah. it, and just the dynamic that he saved the world and everyone and he died and everyone is, thinks that he's insane and he just tried to mm-hmm. assassinate the you know, right? Uh, yeah, it tr- it's such a touching, tragic kind of thing to it that you don't expect. Yeah, 